You're watching France 24 and it's time now for our daily look at the international press. James Creedon has done the honours for us today. Good morning, James. Good morning, Catherine. I guess we're starting in Gaza as that Israeli offensive continues. Is there any difference of opinion emerging now in the press? Well, um, the, first of all, images really are what, what's chiefly emerging. The images are shocking and they're brutal and they're uh, frightening. And this one caught my eye. It's on the front page of the Daily Telegraph. It's, it's in the West Bank town of Hebron. Um, and it I sort of, I suppose, captures the David versus Goliath struggle that is going on there with huge death uh, figures on the uh, uh, on the Palestinian side uh, and death, the death toll much lower of course on the Israeli side um, and the Independent uh, has a, an opinion piece by Robert Fisk about that the veteran Middle East um, reporter uh, he's highly critical as would be expected of the Western response the response of Western leaders and of Israel he says that really we've got so used to carnage in the Middle East at this stage that we don't care anymore and uh, the usual responses are trotted out um, saying well well, it's the fault of the Arabs, who, as we all know, only understand violence. He says that, of course, with tongue in cheek. Um, so he underlines the hypocrisy of Western leaders who, who call on both sides to exercise restraint, as if both sides, he says, had F-18s and tanks and a huge army force behind them. Um, so he, 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 you know, says that Hamas, uh, their homemade rockets have killed 20 Israelis over the past eight years, uh, while in just one day of, 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 of a blitz, the Israeli army killed almost 300 Palestinians. So he's really just reminding us of those figures which speak for themselves, I suppose. He calls it the exchange rate of casualties, uh, which is perhaps the worst in the, entire, in the entire crisis. And he reminds us that this onslaught is unlikely to have any real impact on Hamas's uh, policy, that they're hardly going to say, uh, wow, this blitz is awesome, we'd better recognize the state of Israel and toe the line. Um, so he's, he's saying just be mindful of the cynicism of Hamas and that they, Hamas needs violence to emphasize um, the oppression of Palestinians. Well, there's plenty of mudslinging, too, in other parts of the Arab world over these Gaza raids. Let's uh, go to Egypt, which is finding itself uh, dragged into the conflict almost despite itself. Right. So there's, you know, a, a huge division in the Arab world in response to this. And uh, just reminding uh, viewers that, that Hezbollah, the leader of Hezbollah, has been very critical of e Egypt, which has, uh, for its so-called so passive response to this crisis. Um, well, the Egyptian daily Al-Haram is striking back and defending the honor of Egypt, uh, saying Hezbollah's reaction is overly emotional. And and saying, well, if Hezbollah is so, uh, is so, uh, uh, feels so strongly about this, well, what are they doing about it? And what about their great ally, Syria? Um, has Syria responded any, any, uh, with any greater strength in it than Egypt? So there's a lot of mudslinging back and forth in the, in the Arab press about this. Now, let's go to France, and the French press is getting very hot under the collar about a health controversy. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, which, I mean, in light of what we've just been discussing in Gaza, seems uh, minor, really, because the death, to, the death figures are so much lower. But, um, yeah, the healthcare system in France, which, of course, is renowned as being one of the best in the world, uh, is perhaps best avoided at Christmas time, Catherine, because, uh, well, people take their holidays like everywhere else. And uh, Le Figaro talks about one uh, incident where a man who was gravely ill had to call 27 different hospitals to find an emergency room space and he didn't in the end and uh, the poor man died of four heart attacks uh, while on the way to one of those hospitals which eventually had a vacancy so uh, and there was a three-year-old child also who um, who died on Christmas Day after the wrong medication was administered so staff shortages are causing a lot of uh, upheaval and very briefly James for all those of us who are feeling a little neglected uh, this holiday season or at least uh, sorry for ourselves about having to work what can we do for respite well apparently the New York Post says that Mr Wright could be waiting for all those um, lonely ladies out there, according to the New York Post. His name is Jack Bronstein, and if you send him your address, he will reply with a love letter within days. Um, apparently, there have been thousands of requests, thousands of requests, and uh, he clearly has nothing better to do because within days he'll send a love letter back to all those lonely ladies out there. Christmas right. Time. Well, that's what I'll be doing straight after this bulletin. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, James Creedon, uh, for that review of the papers. Stay tuned to France Van